So if you were expecting Vivek, I'm not him. If you were expecting a Wi-Fi talk in this track, that's not me. Um, if you were expecting to see something new at HackerCon, you're not going to see it because this is probably going to be the same talk at this point. Um, the talk is going to be about how we pretty much suck. Chris Nickerson said it yesterday, we like getting punched in the face. We just like getting beaten and whatever. It's, we're never going to win. We're never going to win this battle. Our jobs as security guys is slow it down a little bit, right? So, uh, my name is Boris Ferdlick. I'm Gigan Security. Nobody knows who Boris Ferdlick is, which I guess is good for my career. Uh, <laughs> I'm also a member of uh, ISD Podcast. You guys who are used to hearing Jaded Exposure before, we're going to be bringing that back in a couple weeks. It's going to be probably as rowdy as it was before, but no ducks. <coughs> so who am I? Jaded Security Guy. Uh, I got some paper behind me, a couple certifications. Really? <laughs> Yay, DerbyCon. <laughs> Um, I hate the I, I hate ISC squared. Dorsey Morrow is a moron. Um, I'm not Abacus. I don't hack for lulls. I don't like beer, and I'm definitely not an app dev, app developer. Have nothing to do with lulzsec. Have nothing to do with antisec. <laughs> but I am anti CSSP, and I like vodka. <coughs> That's what I think of the CSSP. That's the value. I torched it for fun for lulz. But if you are a CSSP, vote for Wim. Just, you got to vote for Wim, because if anybody has a chance of changing it, he does. Don't vote for this dude. This is William H. Murray. Do not vote for him. So, my, my disclaimer, because, you know, I don't want Isaac now calling me and telling me I'm doing a hacking talk. Just don't do it. If it's not a client, don't do anything I'm talking about. <laughs> Unless you have permission, don't do it. Don't do it for the lulls, and some of the stuff I'm going to be talking about is going to be physical security, arm... <coughs> Some places use armed guards. They got guns. You don't really want to be messing with them. So, everybody have a good summer? Lulzsec! So, if the if Department of Homeland Security can't secure their DNS servers, <laughs> what kind of, how can, how can we do anything? <laughs> Lulzsec actually bought Lulzsec.net and used the DHS DNS servers to re, to <laughs> as authorized DNS servers. Awesome, right? Yay, they hacked themselves. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about on the, on the network side. <laughs> Everybody thinks you got firewalls, you got IDS, <coughs> sorry, you, get, you got uh, antivirus, you're secure, right? Wrong. If your apps suck, we've seen SQL injection for what, the last 13 years now? That was in the top 10, top 10, um, <coughs> top 10 of text this summer. Great, right? How is that, how, how, after 13 years, should we really be seeing the same thing in the top 10? It's an easy fix, you do some validation, it's, it's a problem. <laughs> We've seen intrusion detection is easy to bypass. Intrusion prevention doesn't always work without whitelisting everything. It's not going to protect you from abacus. What it does is all, all, these, all these controls are great, but they act as a deterrent for the casual attacker. They're not going to give you anything. They're not going to protect you from someone who's determined and has already picked you as a target. So I'm going to be selling the anti lulsec device. It's going to be a million dollars. It's not going to do anything. Just plug it in and tell your manager you're secure. It's going to protect you from APT, lulls, China, and the shady rat. So, okay, we're done with Bob. We're done with lulls. Let's talk about Bob. Bob really wants to be in you. In you. <laughs> you. Bob likes you. <laughs> Bob's got some skills. He's determined. He's not, a, he's not a skid, right? He's not going to be running SQL map. He's not going to be running all sorts of back tools, backtrack tools built in. He's not going to be running Nessus looking for low-hanging fruit, right? He's, he's got time. He wants you. He'll, he's going to get in. So how's Bob going to do this? So in New York City, the buildings department actually manages a web server that has pretty much your layout, your electrical diagrams, <laughs> schematics, floor prints, anything you could possibly want, all the vendors working at your site. Why would, I even try, why, why would, I even try, why would Bob even try attacking, the vendor, attacking your target? First, your first bet is attacking the vendors. <laughs> New York City, and I actually helped a buddy out a couple days ago, Los Angeles has the same parameters. <laughs> you do passive reconnaissance. You look at, per, you look at open permits. You look at open, uh, open violations. This building actually had a sprinkler violation. I was able to find the vendor associate, the vendor associate who's taking care of that attack, who's taking care of that inspection. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I blame him for making me drink this morning. Right there. 
dedicated attacker is going to do passive reconnaissance. He's not going to he's not going to try to attack you. He's not going to try to attack your vendors and your third party contractors. Third parties always less secure. <laughs> your company might take out your ads in Monster, Dice, whatever. These guys take out their ads in the Tribune. I'm going to be able to get a position there, or at least find out enough about it, enough about you, or enough about ways in going through your third parties. <laughs> if you know about the contractors, you know what war, you, know, uh, you know which wardrobe to use. <laughs> you know what uniforms are there are. You know what the daily routines are. You have to surveil the third parties. Don't don't worry about your eventual target. You have time. We're talking about Bob. We're not talking about the casual attacker. We're not talking about LulzSec. <laughs> LulzSec, yeah, they grabbed like Sony, but they grabbed Sony because Sony's got thousands of subsidiaries and they grabbed low-hanging fruit. So, wardrobe. <laughs> what do we wear? Uniforms are available. Hell, you can buy police, uh, you can buy a police uniform. <laughs> You look, you check Google out. Google, Google's got Google Maps actually helps us do an external. <laughs> Wake up, Dennis. Um, Google, Google Maps allows us to surveil, surveil the environment prior to even stepping foot. Obviously, you're going to want to do as much passive reconnaissance as possible. You're going to drive around. You're going to look at the environment, see what you can do. <laughs> this building in New York, I, which I was working on, has six, seven points of ingress and egress, including a loading dock. Am I color, my color grading right now? I can't really see the picture from the side. Do a quick sell of it. That's fine. That's fine. I'm sorry. Um, so busy lobby areas. More more people can slip by in plain sight in busy lobby areas because there's no there's just nobody there. Nobody do, you, they're not gonna be able to tell you from an active employee. If you're walking around if you're walking around and you fit the part, nobody's gonna ask you any questions. <laughs> Attackers can hate, hide in plain sight. Attacker can map out your cameras, your, your point, points of ingress and egress, points of your security, everything you can possibly think of without even, without even notifying the, client, the target that they're there. Okay, we got locks, right? We all know locks can be picked, bumped, copied, broken, replicated, whatever. Now the makers, bot, people are using those maker bots to print their own keys. So locks are useless at this point. We got security guards. You think those guys are worried? Security guards, they're, they're just trained to be helpful. They're not really trained, they're not really trained to protect anybody. They're not really trained, <coughs> they're not really trained to keep the attackers out. They're trained to be a deterrent, so the casual attacker might skip it. A dedicated attacker is gonna completely overlook your overlook your security guard. They're not, they're not trained for this. They're not trained to review the cameras, they're not trained, they're not trained to they're not trained for what to do in most situations. I've used in the past, if I haven't had a chance to pretext, I'll hire a bum for 50 bucks to go have a pretend to have a heart attack by the by the um, door. It's work. It's work, right? Because they, they don't know what they're doing. They're not trained for these situations. Receptionists, receptionists are easiest to social engineer. They want to be helpful. Plus, now with the Timzy devices, it's even better, right? <laughs> Here, make my appointment. Barcodes, barcodes are the easiest to, easiest to copy. There are programs available now for both the Android and uh, iPhone. You can copy it, walk over to Staples, print it, walk right through the desk like you belong there. Take photos of any visitors in the, in the uh, common areas. We got magnetic card readers. Dave likes free hugs. This is why you shouldn't hug Dave. I'm pretty sure Dave's stealing your RFID cards. Um, swipe the card, copy the card, put the card back. I'm sorry, that was magnetic. I apologize. These are the <laughs> RFID. First step, bump. Second step, copy. Third step, you're in. You replicate RFID card, you're in. So all, the, all these security, all these controls are useless. They're, they act as deterrents for the casual attacker, but they're not going to do anything for the dedicated attacker. Turnstiles, those half turnstiles, they don't really. I'm not really even sure why people spend money on these things. Cameras, cameras are great, but cameras are detective controls. You're going to get if a dedicated attacker can slip by, slip by your cameras. <laughs> they're not. They're not there because nobody. Nobody's viewing all the monitors real time. Even in federal facilities, federal facilities there are blind spots. You don't. You can't set everything up properly. Tailgating. 2000, 2011. We're still seeing this. This isn't anything new. So once again, most controls are deterrents. We're not looking. They're not going to stop the casual attacker. <coughs> Card readers protecting a secured area. Great. And then you see that the dry. That the there's a suspended ceiling. Why would you even invest in the RFID system? Um, drywall can be cut, suspended ceiling circumvented, motion detectors bypassed. Oh no, an attacker's inside. 
So this is, this is what this is where I find the fun the fun stuff is. I don't really have many slides. This is most, this is going to be more more of back and forth. So if I'm bullshitting, or you see, you think you want to use, you want to call me out on something, just go for it. <laughs> um, we don't care about data centers anymore, right? It's all like cloud and all GRC and everybody's secure because nobody has anything now. It's all policy based. <laughs> what? APT, I'm an APT. I'm from China. Th the point is, once, once the attacker's inside, even if you have a NAC, even if you have certain controls that protect your, that protect your infrastructure, they're going to bypass them. You can plug it in. You got printers, you got voice over IP phones, VLANs can be hopped. There's really nothing you can do to keep out the casual attacker. So I, how, do you do, how do you keep out the casual attackers? You, you act. You build your you build your you build your programs so you build your programs like the like a dedicated attacker would. <coughs> you do a full on penetration you do a full on penetration test where you think outside the box, just as Kevin had said, and uh, Dave had said. You got to think as an attacker. You got to look look at look at what we're doing. This is some of the stuff we've seen. Really, that's a problem. This is how they build their stuff. That's, a, that's not even security through obscurity. That's like, please break me now. So what do we do? We break in. We have to show them that we can that we can bypass these controls. We have to help them build their build their build their build their solution to accommodate the current threats. Like for example, LulzSec LulzSec shouldn't shouldn't have done shit this summer, but we didn't do anything. If you got hit and you didn't have LulzSec as part of your threat uh, as part of your threat vector, that's a problem. We need to go back and revisit what. We, but draw out everything that we know and start from scratch. I personally, vendors hate me because I don't think that there's a single magic solution with Linux Lights. It just, it doesn't exist. There's nothing we can sell them. There's nothing we can do outside of going in, looking at what we currently have, and trying to think of the attacker group. Everybody's going to get in. If you think you can't get popped, you're wrong. You're going to get popped. Everybody can get popped. You got popped just now. Um, so, uh, so how, how do we how do we fix this? We break everything up. We gotta start so go back go back fix it. Everybody says there's no patch for stupidity. There is. We gotta focus on layer A because it's all about the users. The users are your final control. Think DLP for a second. <coughs> DLP is great, right? But there's no such thing as a magic solution where hey, I'm gonna catch everything that comes out of my environment. You can't catch everything out of your environment because I can walk in with a camera phone and start snapping things. There is no single magic box solution that's gonna protect you. Doesn't matter if it's physical, doesn't matter if it's network, the, any, every type of control that you can think of can be bypassed. <coughs> Look at what they were doing with the with the ESA, with the um, Tinsy devices. You send them a keyboard. Dave and Kevin did this. You sent them a keyboard. How are you gonna get how are you gonna bypass that? How are you gonna fix that? It's layer eight, you gotta focus on the users. You gotta make sure that your users aren't well, aren't as dumb as you think they are. Change your layer eight control. Change your security awareness. It's all about security awareness at this point. I register. Oh. Bob has Bob has a domain that's similar to Gmail. <laughs> Very similar to Gmail. I use it a lot in my social engineering and my security and my effectiveness of security awareness training. A couple weeks ago, I sent out 100 emails. I got 40 responses. I picked up credentials from 40 people out of 100. It does. There's nothing. There's no common reason why anybody would click anything that I had sent. It looks like Gmail. You get a little error. It's not. It wasn't a Java attack. I was just doing credential credential tagging just specifically to test effectiveness. But if you have users clicking these things, what's to prevent them from clicking shell shell exploits? You got to look at what you currently have. Those sh those little, those little Tinsy devices, the shell exploits, they can be bypassed. Your, your, your machine shouldn't have any access to the internet. If your machines are connected directly to the internet or can route through the firewall externally, you have, you have a bigger problem than anything else. You can't buy anything. There's nothing you're going to buy to fix that. <coughs> so you got to work on your security awareness program. Look at what you currently have. So take a look at your firewalls. Take a look at your proxies. Take a look at your networks. Take a look at all your current processes and throw everything out the window. Don't buy anything. Stop spending money. There's not a single tool you're going to buy just because it's a compliance checklist that you're going to be able to fix the environment. 
<laughs> I think penetration testing is a big way to learn what your external threats are, but your external threats aren't all the problems. Your internal threats are your bigger problems. You've bought all these devices. You've bought all these endpoint perimeter solutions. <laughs> you've bought, hey, we, we need to encrypt the D USB for DLP. No, you don't need to encrypt the USB for DLP because that's not DLP. That's part of the DLP process, but that's not DLP. <laughs> Anybody can walk in with a camera phone. You got insiders using cam scanners scanning documents. A couple days ago, I, a lawyer for a major entertainment, thing, major entertainment provider, I'm not going to say who, had their grand jury subpoena in his hand while I was in line in Starbucks. Really? What DLP program is going to prevent that? Because it's not a tool. There's no magic blinky lights that you can buy and, and sell this. It's not going to happen. Um, questions so far? I'm, I got a couple more. What did he get at Starbucks? A chai mocha latte. How much time do I have? Oh. Yay, DerbyCon. Blinky lights, anti lulls. So, I apologize. I should have had more slides, but it's more, it was more GRC, it's useless. Our testing is useless. There's just so many things that we need to, lo that we need to look at. We need to stop buying shit. And that's what, that's what I, I actually have had these conversations with vendors. I don't want to buy anything. Security is not black and white. There's no checklist that I can check that, hey, I have this, I have this. Hey, anybody think they're PCI compliant, they're secure? Who's PCI compliant and they think they're secure because they're PCI compliant? Anybody? No? No hands? Okay. Socks, GLB. It's a great first start. Those the reason I like regulations, I come from finance. I just recently left the finance industry. Finance regulations gave me budget to fix shit. But they didn't really didn't give me regulation. They didn't really didn't give me budget to bring anything in. In terms of budget, I don't need to buy a magic blinky light solution. I'm looking for, okay, so I got a firewall. Great. I got an IDS that's sitting there that nobody's touching. It doesn't do anything. How many of you have IDSs that aren't configured or aren't properly reporting? Anybody? Everybody here that's just not willing to admit it? There's, there's someone that's willing to admit it. I, nobody has an IDS that fully works. You're, all, you're, all you're getting is false positives. Because it's sitting there because someone sold you a $100,000 solution that, okay, I'll sit there. And because it was $100,000, nobody's going to admit that they broke it. <laughs> and we have the same thing. We have the same thing with DLP. We have the same thing with antivirus. Who needs antivirus these days? Microsoft Security Essentials is going to be built into so is going to be built into Windows 8. I got a Mac. I'm secure, right? <laughs> I don't click on shit. That's why I'm secure. It has nothing to do with antivirus. I don't click on shit. It's all user awareness. Layer 8 is going to be where, and our job is never going to be to stop them. We can't stop them. If you think you can stop them, you think you're totally secure, you need to walk away from the business because you're going to be disappointed. As much money as you spend, as much money as you pay them, you're never going to stop. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> Our job is to make the attack go from 30 seconds to as long as we as long as we possibly can, and that that takes process. That takes taking what you currently have, re looking at your environment from a, to, from an external perspective. What are your assets? Sony. Sony recently said that they lost 170 million dollars worth of revenue in terms of those attacks. What about and what about the uh, reputation? Can anybody put a number on their reputational risk? Does anybody know what Sony with PSN being down four weeks? Cost of, cost of business in terms of reputation. In terms of finances, okay, fine. This, this is how much gaming they make, whatever. I don't know what PSN, I don't know the processes behind PSN. <coughs> well, I can't hear you. See, and then, my problem with Paul's talk is that's illegal in some states. You can't hack them back. It just doesn't work. It's illegal. You can't even run a port scan in some states. This whole hack back, yeah, okay, it's great. I'd love to, if someone hacks me, I'd love to be able to just sit there and say, I'm going to own everything you have, which is great. It's not necessarily legal. As to what, rerouting them or something? That doesn't, that doesn't, that's wasting more of your time than doing anything else. What do you mean? Like re rerouting them to a honeypot or something? Security research? That, that, that's good for the security research side. On the corporate side, that doesn't buy me anything. I just want to keep them out. 
right? And there's not a single, for, for example, like let's look at, let's look at the hack, hack back thing, right? Honey nuts are great. How many vendors, how many vendor, IDS vendors that use, the, how many vendors have I implemented stuff that they found within honey nuts as signatures? Nobody. Even with SourceFire, Snort gives you better signatures than SourceFire, right? It's all open source community. So what we need to do is we need to, we need to as, as an industry, we need to stop buying shit. Go back, and I love Nick Richardson's talk. It was awesome. Just punch him in the face. What's going to happen? We all get punched in the face, right? We get punched in the face every day. In no other industry are we so sadomasochistic that we like to get beat up. We're never going to succeed. Security guys never succeed, ever. Well, Pence has to succeed, but security guys is in defensive guys. <laughs> we'll never succeed, ever. We're going to get beat every single day, and we're getting beat by 10-year-olds. We're getting by, beat by 10-year-olds because we're buying these magic blinky light boxes that don't do anything. IDS, IPS, AV, endpoint, endpoint security, perimeter devices, every, they don't do anything. There's not a single, but there's no magic solution. We're never going to find the magic solution. It's just not going to work. Risk management is hard, almost as hard as sim, but what you got to do is take it back to the basic levels. Do classification. That's one of my big deals. Like, I love these companies that, hey, we just got an audit point where we need to fix this. Okay. Why don't you go back and classify what you're actually trying to protect? This is what Nickerson went into. Like, okay, do the fives. This is how much it's going to cost. Do the fours. This is how much. Most companies don't even want to do the fives. And, but they'll do the fives when they get hit. So what do we do? We just wait to get punched in the face? I just don't think that's the right. I don't. I don't think that's the right argument. We've already spent a shitload of money. Why not bring in pro? Forget st stop selling shit. Vendors want to make money, and I get that. I'm. Hey, I'm a vendor. Bring in ProServe guys and look at what you currently have and start reconfiguring this shit. Work with your business lines. Figure out what you're doing. It just doesn't make sense to keep buying shit to try to. <coughs> every time a new every time a new threat vector comes out, people start buying shit, and that's one of my biggest things. So you, on the perimeter side and the physical side, you see it's all bullshit. On the network side, it's all bullshit. You can have an ironclad perimeter if your application sucks. Okay, a SQL injection might not get your root shell. Well, it might get the it might get the assets that the business own. The, it might get the assets that the business needs, right? Look at your business. Look at what the, look at what they make money from. If they make money from source code and the SQL injection gets me a source code, okay, it might not be the most sophisticated sophisticated attack, but this is what this can potentially take the business out or cost them money. Right, it's all about it's all about it's all about the bottom line. What are we going to do to save the bottom line? Any, any other questions, concerns? Casual, yes, if it's configured right. If it's configured right, how many devices are configured right? problem. You're right. It, you, casual attackers, it does stop casual attackers. It mitigates, the, it mitigates the threat vector of casual attackers. If firewalls were configured right, if applications were configured right, if they were using WAFs, SQL injections would go away. LulzSec summer would not have happened. It did. It's the same attack we saw 13 years ago. And then the, so companies like Sony and pay, even PayPal, hey, they, they're costing us money. Um, maybe you should have looked at your application. And it's not about blaming the victim. I'm not, it's okay, whatever. I'm not, I'm not all about blaming the victim, but what I'm saying is you can't say it's a top 10 risk in 2011 when it was a top 10 risk in 97. You didn't address it. Anybody else? Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. Take what you have. Agreed. So keep it simple. Start beating them. Hit them. Take them into a ring and start beating them. <laughs> treat them like treat them like the retail. The way to enforce is security awareness. And what I've seen, especially in finance, you find the worst offender. Who cares if he's an, an analyst all the way up to a VIP? You fire him, and you make it a point that that's that's why. If management isn't behind you on the user awareness, you're never going to pass it. It's not something that we can drive from IT. That has to be a management piece. You start changing user awareness, you're going to start. You're going to start seeing a lot more change. You're going to see people stop clicking on shit. I personally think you're going to see stop people stop clicking on shit. Go ahead.
You're going to minimize the risk. I just think my wealth stock device is going to make me money. How many of you are in corporate America outside of, outside of professional services? How many of you guys are in corporate America? Have you ever bought a $100,000 device and be willing to admit to somebody it doesn't work? Exactly. These are where the IDSs are. They hang out in someone's closet and they don't do anything because they've never been configured right. You just spend a hundred grand on something. It's okay. It's someone else's money, but I'm never going to admit that we didn't do anything to it. Is that, does that, does that kind of answer it? It's, Agreed, but that's most of the tools. Most of the tools. Most of the vendors, they want to sell you, and then they want to sell you services, right? But how about vendor? and this is where I think vendors would provide value. Okay, you want to sell me something? That's fine. Here's my budget. I'll buy anything from you. But I want you to come in here, look at everything I have. You're going to make more money on services than on a, a magic bullet or magic appliance. Come in here, look at everything I have. Help me. To explain to me what I need to do. Look at my classification. If I don't have a classification policy, how are you selling me DLP? How can you walk in there and sell me DLP if I don't even know what the hell I have? Right? And that's my biggest thing. That's my biggest complaint with vendors, and that's why I have sort of an out thing with them. That might be why ISC Squared hates me, because they're, they're good at marketing. Stop clicking shit. Not anymore, not after you sign that little piece of paper when you go to the doctors. HIPAA's bullshit. Yeah, yeah, signing off on your data, signing off on allowing them to release your data is the same thing as clicking on shit. Here, own my computer or own my life. Right, because right now, look at, look at identity theft. Who are they targeting with identity theft? They're not targeting adults because we kind of got it already, right? We, we get it. We're, we're going to look at our credit reports. They're targeting kids because they don't look. That's, it's, it, it's all about user awareness. There's nothing, we've been doing this, the industry isn't old enough where we've, we've come up with statistics, we've come up with metrics, we like, we got big pretty charts. It's all, in, 90, in, the, in the late 90s, we used Nessus, we gave them the reports here, you're done. We didn't do shit. Okay, someone, I, I saw some tweets going around about domain admin not meaning shit. You're right, domain admin doesn't mean shit if you don't, if you're not, if you're looking for a piece of paper at your client, getting domain admin on their environment's not, doesn't mean anything. So the whole pen testing thing, I support pen, test pen testing only because I, <laughs> I do pen testing. But I'm not going to sell you a pen test if you have one web server and all your shit's inside, right? Okay, maybe a social engineering attack to try to get it, but let's look at the scope. Let's look at what you have. And right now, I think there every, major, every major vendor has enough shit. Uh, uh, no. Every major client, every Fortune 500, Fortune 1000, has enough shit that they need to turn off their security budget for anything but resources. No, stop buying shit. Don't buy anything. But we don't click shit. He clicks shit. With, the, with HIPAA. We got, well, well, we, well, but that's the same thing. We're signing off. We're allowing that. Yes. Yes. And the same government. And Okay, so look at it this way. The same government mandates are telling us that we have to secure our systems, but they don't know what the fuck they're doing. I am. I mean, in terms of repercussions, you have no options. You're, you're fucked, pretty much. Move to move somewhere else. 
They're going to tell you China took your data. No, no, I get what you're, I get what you're saying. We just don't have any options. I, I'm not I'm not there yet. I'm focusing on let, let's focus on let's focus on your banks first, right? We're we're never going to fix that. But what we need to do as a community, we need to start saying when they push these new policies on us, these new regulations, yeah, PCI is bullshit. We need as a as an industry, we need to go back and say this doesn't do anything. If you're expecting us to be secure because we follow these five or six checklists, eh. The one, and the, so I come from finance and healthcare, and the one differentiation I've seen between, give me one sec, I'm sorry. The one differentiation I've seen between finance and healthcare, healthcare can't afford fines. Healthcare gets fined, they can go out of business. And I've seen it happen before. Healthcare's get fined, that's bigger for them than a breach. Finance, okay, it's gonna cost us $5 million to implement this or a million dollar fine, we'll just pay the fine. I've had up security for two global banks. They don't give a shit. That's the problem. Go ahead, I'm sorry. When every user is what? I doubt it. They think they are. They think they are. You fuck with them. You fuck with them. You do you do you do like monthly you do monthly internal you do Monthly internal spear phishing attacks. Here's how you do it. You do monthly internal spear phishing attacks, depending on the size of the company, and you humiliate, them, humiliate the fuck out of them. <laughs> hey, Apple's having a 25% sale. Click this. And then you send the results out. Your managers are going to support it. Your managers are going to support it. You, you, need to, you need to increase that. Change it. Add more. Add more. You need to enforce. Wait, wait. So does management stand behind you? Does management stand behind you? No. No, they don't. Yeah, yeah. So what you need to do is you need to start sending it to the line managers. You need to start sending it to line managers so they make fun of them. Yeah, that's a problem. That's a problem. You need to humiliate the shit out of them. We did an effectiveness test where we did 25% off iPods. You know how many people click? 98%. We humiliated the shit out of them. The first time might have not been effective. You know, there wasn't a lot of talk. The second time we did it a month later, oh yeah, they stopped. It went down from 98% to 20%. Stop buying shit. He sells shit. Okay. He sells shit. That's why he's asking. It's called a proxy. It's called a proxy, which you already have. No, you already have it. I guarantee you already have it. But what it's doing is just content filtering. It's not actually being used to 100%. You know how to use PAT? PAT technology? Your firewall can rewrite all those layers. You have a firewall, right? That turns off direct access. A proxy. Proxy. Do you have a box? I'll install Squid for you. It'll take me two hours. Yes, yes. Penetration testing is not easy. You don't have to find one hole. Finding one hole is a Nessus scan. I don't want that. You give me a Nessus scan, I'm going to throw it back in you and say, okay, now what? I know, but you're saying it's one hole. A penetration test is gaining an asset. That's not winning. Open source. Open source. Open source. I headed up security for a bank with zero budget. Like literally, they got more for Blackberries than I got to do anything. Open source. You got Google, you got yourself and your security admins or whoever's got admin to systems. That's what, you, you work with what you have. You work with what you have. You don't buy a magic box from someone just because it says it's going to do A, B, and C. Yeah, you can. Nothing works. Let me ask you a question. If you buy something, you can buy this blinky light $100,000 piece. Unless you bring someone in to configure it for you, it's not going to do anything anyway. 
So why not? But you can bring, I guarantee you, services. I No, I didn't say don't buy services. I agree. I think you need to buy services. I really think, okay, maybe I'm biased because I'm in services, but I spent the last 10 years on the defensive side on counter. I've, I've, seen, I've seen organizations buy shit and, like, buy expensive shit that just sits there in the data center. Nobody knows. Nobody even knows how to log in. Nobody even knows if it's a bot in, on its own. That's my problem. Stop buying shit. Stop clicking shit. Stop doing shit. You'll be protected. You'll protect from yourself from the laws if you stop doing shit. No, 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 because you're not going to go out of business. Right? The security guys who keep running every, who keep running in and saying the sky's falling, the sky's falling, they don't get any respect because they don't show up. Go ahead. I kind of want to piggyback on what he said there, that there's a lot of scripts and a lot of stuff for a lot of script kiddies and other people to automatically break into stuff. But it's not necessarily that way for the defensive side. So we have like a lot of penetration yeah, tests, a lot of oh, search and stuff like that for attacking systems. It's not necessarily like an OSCP for blue team for defending shit. Oh, yeah, there is. There is? Yeah, there is. Look at, even, look at even, okay. Even take the NIST standards, which I think are bullshit, but they're at least a step towards the right direction. A lot of us don't even do that. A lot of us, domain admins got everything, fuck it, right? Hey, I'll give everybody root even though I know how to use sudo. Really? Really? Why does, every, why does anybody need root? Why do you share passwords? Why do developers share passwords? Because it's all stupid. Before we, I mean, okay, I'm not completely against buying shit. I do think we need to buy shit. But what I think we need to do is take a step back, look at what we have. Just implement the basic fucking controls. Do classification. Do policies. Do procedures before you go out and buy shit. Before you get H coming in and selling a DLP solution. Yes, Raf, I'm talking to you. I don't know if you're in here. Before you get someone selling you a solution, look at what you have. Look at the policies look at you, uh, you have. Look at the processes. You're a Windows shop. You can do a lot with GPO. You can do tons with GPO. Nobody's doing it because everybody's like, hey, I can buy a magic box. I'll fix everything. Look at USB encryption, right? So DLP, endpoint, per endpoint, endpoint perimeter, endpoint solutions, they encrypt USB. So if I'm encrypting data that's protecting it from leaving the building, really? It, I'm encrypting it so it's safe. That just means I can't leave it at a bar. I can use GPO on Windows to just turn off the fucking USB port. It's not going to cost me anything. And now I'm guaranteed that nothing's going to come off that machine on a USB. But now I'm encrypting data so it's okay. Anybody else? Go ahead. I'm jaded, so just remember, I'm going to be arguing. I wish I had more slides. <laughs> I'm not Vivek. I was asked on Friday. My anti lulz device? I'm selling it. Lights are extra. No, don't ever reinvent the wheel, ever, because you're going to fuck it up. Even if you spend shitloads of money on developers, you're going to fuck it up. No. You're going to fuck it up. Don't do it. You're talking security through obscurity. I'm going to build it myself so nobody's going to break it. Yeah, it has the vulnerabilities where nobody commented anything and everybody's going to fuck with it. Don't do it. Yeah, you are. You already have code in your, you, you definitely have code already that you wrote yourself to do something else. You wouldn't have brought it up. <laughs> I, I don't, I, don't, I honestly, I'm not just messing with you, but I honestly don't think that I'm a huge <laughs> advocate about not building anything yourself. Unless you're a software company. If you're a software company, yes. Yes, Casey, where are my midgets? It's Saturday. I think the PTSG is great. I think that until we start marketing and it becomes mainstream, it's, we're still going to have these mom and pop, these mom and pop vulnerability, 
these mom and pop pen testing companies trying to sell me an SS scan for 10 grand. We don't have a standard. Are you, are you going to manage this? I'm in. I'm in. Are you going to manage this? You're going to lead it. KC is going to start the user awareness guidance document. I'm in. Yay! I'm in. I volunteer my time. I'm, I'm good with it. I'm in. Because I honestly don't think, I'm, until you train the users, you're not going to get shit done. By the way, he, he's had intimate rel relations with Legat, so I don't know if we trust him. Buy shit. Okay, so making security invisible means that nobody thinks about it. It means that people are going to still click shit. Look at Microsoft Security Essentials. I honestly think once, once they get that thing rolling, every AV company is going to go out of business. It's built in, right? It's built in. McAfee's doing their deep safe shit, or McAfee, right? Yeah. They're doing deep safe. There's like 100 BIOS vendors. Who, who, who are they going to partner with? Once Microsoft figures out how to get essentials into the Windows 8, AV's going away. I, just, I, I, I honestly don't think security should be transparent to anybody. Security is everybody's job. Look at Apple on what? <laughs> my, my secure. My Mac is secure. My Mac is secure. No, but no, Apple's never been transparent. They just said, hey, you know why it's secure? Because nobody gives a fuck enough about us to, to attack it. Now that it's got a bigger user base. No, but that's why most Mac users think they're secure, because nobody ever gave a shit before. Now they do. Now with Bada at times, but throw something in my Yay, DerbyCon! Please help yourself to ISD podcast stickers. I'll take one more question. Anybody? CISSP sucks. Anybody? Yay, DerbyCon! Vodka. Help yourself to some stickers. Thank you for listening to me.